So here we're going to talk about number 12 uh, for my students. This is problem 33 in chapter 24 of Sir William Jewett, ninth edition, Physics for Scientists and Engineers. Um, we have a, um, sorry about that, I thought it was, uh, we have a long cylinder of charge um, with a big radius R and a uniform charge density. Find the electric field at a distance, some distance R from the axis where we are inside the electric, uh, the, uh, the uniform charge density. So we're inside the cylinder. Little r is less than big R. Okay. So let's do that calculation. <clears throat> As you can imagine, we're going to use Gauss's law here. So we have a big cylinder and it's placed on the axis. And it has a radius R, right? And it has a charge density rho. And we can imagine that that cylinder has a charge big Q on it, and that whole cylinder has some big volume V. Okay. Um, what we're looking for is we're looking for the electric field inside. So we're going to draw a Gaussian surface, and like always, we're going to have it mimicking our actual object. So we're going to draw another cylinder. I'm going to draw a small cylinder inside. Okay, and this guy has a radius little r. And I'm going to say that that length there is L. And it too is centered on the on the axis. Okay, so what we're looking for is we're looking for the electric field. And we see, we recall that the integral of e dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And again, this is the area of the Gaussian surface, so that orange line there is our Gaussian, and Q enclosed is all of this guy here. Okay, This is Q enclosed. Because the density is uniform, we know that the density is charge over volume. And so if we look at the entire cylinder, it's the, the entire charge over the entire volume, but it's also equal to the Q enclosed over the volume enclosed. Okay, so that's probably going to help us to, to rewrite what Q enclosed is. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. So Q enclosed is equal to rho times the volume enclosed. Okay, so if we we look at what that volume is. Well, we don't need to redraw it. We, we know that the volume is the area of the, the side times the length. And that area is pi r squared, little r squared. It's important to, to, to remember which r you're talking about. This big r actually does not come into play. The only thing we care about big r for is to make sure that little r is not bigger than that. But big r doesn't, doesn't really come into um, into play in this problem at all. So this is pi r squared. This is the volume enclosed. So we're talking about this little Gaussian surface. And then the volume is base times height. And so we need the length of that, of that Gaussian surface there. So that's Q enclosed. If we think about the electric field, um, we don't know exactly what the electric field looks like, but we can imagine, and again, notice that my Gaussian surface is only a small part here in the, in the middle. So the rod is long. We're considering the rod to be long. So any charges over here that are producing electric fields um, that may be acting on these charges here, um, kind of in that direction, are going to be offset by the same kind of charge over here on this side. So the only electric fields that will survive are electric fields that are going radially outward from the center. Okay, And that's important because this is a dot product. These are vectors. And so the electric field pointing out is, in this case, per, uh, parallel to the, to the area, to the little dA. So imagine all these little differential areas here on the edge. They are parallel. dA is parallel to E. Okay, And so and also the electric field is constant everywhere along this wrapper, along this uh, radius r, little r. Okay, 
and that the electric field here going into or, or uh, along the side is perpendicular to the differential area of the sides of the cylinder. So there is no flux through the sides. The only flux is through the middle. So this guy here, the, the electric field is constant and it's parallel to A. And so this term, just as we've seen time and time again, just becomes EA. Okay. And again, the only flux that survives is the flux of the middle portion here, not the flux of the edges. And we should probably draw what that A looks like. We take our Gaussian surface. There's the end cap. There's the wrapper. And there's the other end cap there. So this circle and this circle are the same. And so this has a radius little r, little bit r. This length here is this length here, which is L. And then this is simply the wrapper that goes around the edge. And so this is just the circumference 2 pi little r. So the area of that middle wrapper part is 2 pi r times l. Okay. So, and again, we're looking for the electric field inside. So I'm going to write E in inside to be the electric field. I'm just reminding myself that we're only talking about the electric field inside this, this, uh, that cylinder. So the area is the area of my Gaussian surface. And Q enclosed is the charge enclosed by my Gaussian, this hash mark here. And we've already done that. And don't forget the epsilon naught. That's an easy thing to forget. And now we can just start canceling out. So pi's go away, the L's go away, one of the R's goes away. And so we're left with E n is equal to rho times r over 2 epsilon naught. So that is the electric field inside of a, an insulator. Now we know it's an insulator because um, if it were a conductor, then all the charges would be on the outside and there would be no electric field on the inside. So there it is there. Well, we don't actually have, well, I don't know. Yeah, let's, uh, we assume it's an insulator. A rho could be uh, could be a zero on the inside, but uh, let's just pretend it's an insulator there and not have to worry about it. And then there's, the charges are, are spread out throughout. Okay, it's getting late. I should probably go to bed after this one. So let's just type it in. It's symbolic again. So we need Greek symbol. We need a row. And we need a little r. I don't, I don't know if we need to do a times r. Let's try it without row r. And then we need to do, oh, I should have done the like first. Row times r times 2. Uh, times epsilon naught. So we're going to do Greek epsilon operation subscript. And then the naught is a 0. So let's see if this works. Yay. Okay. That's it for that one.